more to it, like going to geek and down a, a, a way, a, a way we G walk, and I don't know who that is that you're with, but you know, going to geek and down a way does it to get out. I don't know what uh, I don't know what they're doing. You can just keep adding on. Oh, we need we can down away. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. I don't know it. Neil. Okay. Thanks, Grant. Me good to Uh The next one is Nagi can down. I do know, or I know it. I know it. Nagi can down. You see me? I. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then, if you wanted to add to that, would you say um, "Nagi Kandan away"? I know yeah. that. Nagi Kandan away, kwe kagi kagi kido. I know that lady that's talking. That's awesome. Nagi Kandan away, kwe kagi kido. You said kagi kido. Kagi kido. Kagi kido. So the next one is. You should help me. And that's in reference to like, because I know learners that are initially first learning, they kind of stumble on pronunciation and um, reading the, the, du the double vowels or the how you say the phrase. So you, they could say, you know, teach them to say, you know, uh, um, Elder, you should help me, you know. The girl we do question, please help me. Yeah. In in a good kita we do go we do go on. Che aya ah, you should help an elder. Che aya ah is an elder. We do go on. Che aya ah. You can just find different words to put other sentences together. The next one is, <clears throat> I got this one from, um, this one was from a, a online resource, Graham. This one isn't, I don't know, if, let me know if it's correct or not, if how we say it in our dialect. Aninéji oji bi aman. Aninéji oji bi aman. I don't, yeah, because I just yeah. found that on. How do you write this, that's right. It is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I, I just wanted to add more to, to our phrases, and I just I was just searching online for other language Another material. thing, when you say sign here, like they have you sign your name, you, you, the word for that is Don B. Ige. Don B. Ige, Ma, please sign here. You know? I'm going to write that down right now. Okay. Don, Don B. Ige, Ma. And, you know, that's... Uh, that's, I remember I uh, I was doing a, a, a what do you call that thing? You, the elder can't speak the language English, and they you I she had to sign a paper, and that's what I told her. Oma don be again. Here, sign. I said, and then she just just put a little. Uh, a soft lady. Oma would don be again. Or don be again, Oma. Sign here. You know, uh, Ojibi Iganak is a pencil. See, you see Ojibi Igan. Ojibi Igan. That's a pen or a pencil. Ojibi Iganak. Another way. Okay. The uh, the next one is, I think, with the uh, yeah, it would be me, me. Well, we say miguayok, right? Mm -hmm. But I think some people wouldn't they pronounce it miguayok? Yeah. Guayok. But either way, it's it's acceptable. Mi, mi, you, yeah, what you said, that's the right way to say it. Mi around the area. Mi yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it is correct. Um, ikaduk. I'll say it. Yeah. Got ikaduk. Please, everyone say it. Gikido. Gikido. Away. Away. Gikido. That man said it. Away. Away. Binuchi asked Gikido. 
I was reading in that book too, that, that Ojibwe resource book you gave me. Mm -hmm. I was like, how do you explain to somebody how, if you heard somebody say something like your mother or your father, and that's what, yep, that's what you just said. It said, you could say, Namama Kikadu, my mother said, and then you you put what what they what they what they said after. Namama Kikadu. She be she be Mama Kikadu. Take a bath, your mother said. Yeah. Or you know you can <laughs> use you use your words just however, you, just so you know what the word means. You know. Newman Gum. No. No. Newman Gum. Alrighty. So <clears throat> the next one. Uh Anway Bida. Is that I, did I say that right? Yeah. Anway Bida. Yeah. Let's rest. Anway Bida. <clears throat> I used to hear that a lot out where I sing. Them old old people. Bida on on way be done. We should rest. On way be done. The next one, Namatta Bin. There's different ways you can use Namatta Bin. Like I get calls from my grandkids or whoever, my kids, and uh, they say, Ani Neshigayan, what are you doing? I'll say, Oh, me, I have to go Namatta Bin. I'm just sitting. Me at the gunna madab gibegizik. That's all day. I'm sitting all day. Or uh, you can say namadabin, namadab. You know, there's different ways to say. But you know, namadabin. The gunna madabin ama. Sit here, right here. As you got. Nah. It's crawling right up me. That's a wood pit. How would you say that? They're everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. Okay. Um are we at Bizandaushu? Bizan. Bizan. You all listen. You all listen. Bizan. Bizan. Bizan is the singular one for you listen, right? Yeah. And Bizandaushu is you all listen. Yeah. Um, it says, or like you say, Bizandan. No. Bizandaushu, you listen to me. You know, listen. Bizandaushu. Means you all listen to a, a person, or or when you're in with like I I have a group of kids in front of me. I'm saying get down, this and down. As you get get to one, you listen what I'm saying. This on, this on, this and down, this on, this on. So you could see this on. Be quiet, this on. The next one is Kinita Anishinaabe Moanama. Do you speak Anishinaabe? Or, you know, yeah, do, you, do you speak the language? <clears throat> you could respond with, well, how would you respond, Grant? You would either say, Aya, yes, Bangi, a little. Bangi, no, Gawin. Very good, Grant. You know what you get? The next one is Kitab Ishitun Nishinabe Moy. You should use your language. Well, you, you, you said it translates to use your Indian language or just use your. I just put on the flyer, you mm -hmm. should use your language. Or you could just say, uh, as you speak or uh, you can use uh, 
Kitā nesanā vēma vēn. Tā, tu lēngums, kitā. Another way you can say abhiji tu and use it is abhiji a. Kitā abhiji a nesanā vēma vēn. Kitā abhiji tu and nesanā vēma vēn. When Don Chosa was up here working as a Mishinaabe teacher and stuff at RTC, he had some pens printed out. They they said on it said on there, Abiji Ah Mishinaabe Mawen, use your language. Abiji Tun Mishinaabe Mawen. And there's another word like uh, like no this uh. Uh, I can't remember that. That one word came back to me. It's called, it's, uh, it's how you say send it. Send it. Let's say you're sending a package or sending something. You say, uh, send it. Ah, oh, I think I've heard you say it once or twice growing up. I'll think of it. It'll, it'll come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't think of it now. I'm getting that way. Sometimes a word comes to me right away. And, uh, or I gotta wait for a while for it to. This one I can't think of. And there's a lot of. There's a lot of ways you can use your language. Like, and if you see somebody in the morning, you say, Who's your niche? Honey, Neshi, Ayaya, Nungum. How are you today? And that person can say, Oh, you know, Aya, oh, I'm well. Or, or, uh, Gawin, Gawin, uh, me no ayasi, no I'm not well. Ani indash, why? Oh, kabe de bikad me. Kibe de bikad me akuzi. I've been sick all night. Oh, Andi, where? The tiguan. My head. You know, you could just keep on. If you had someone else to speak with, you can just keep making the sentence go longer, longer, longer. Um, oh, now I, I remembered it. Ojinjamo. Oh, that means send it. Ojinjamo. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. Zinjamo. Means make you zinjamo. Oh, where the junior goes. This I sent my, I sent my. Send some money. Make he send you more away. Away and it goes this soon, yeah. Share bar this morning. See, you can, you can, um, go on each minute and say how much. Oh, in good dog, 100. But there's just so much. It would probably take a long, long time. At least a year. So, there's a lot of words I still didn't use yet. And some are just coming out. And yeah, isn't that crazy when you there's certain things that people keep in their mind, and then sometimes they don't even use, uh, you know, certain parts of the language. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose too. You know, like a lot of when I was first learning, or at least. I always paid attention to, uh, you know, when they uh, rendered a, a invocation or a, a prayer. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the words that I that I became familiar with um, were in that spiritual area of language, mm -hmm. you know. And I suppose that's true with most most of the language, but just you know what I mean. Prayer language, mm -hmm. the east, the west, the, yeah, the, the spirits, and mm -hmm. all of that, you know. I, I noticed when when uh, people that never used to be like that when all the old men were doing prayers a long time ago 
they said the words loud and clear so I, so everybody even the younger kids could learn you know you know in uh, that's that's what I try to do I try to say them loud mm -hmm. so people can understand you know how are you gonna understand if someone just says do shu do shu money do niki yeah. Nobody can understand what you're saying. Right. How do you expect people to learn the language if you don't uh, say it you know, loud? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have Perry start with a prayer on, so he can uh, he can say the words loud and clear so you can learn. Oh yeah, so that'd be good, huh? He do. Well, which one? Uh, four. Four directions. Okay. All right. <clears throat> About putting tobacco out first this morning before you start. All right. Now get your money do. Nidasa Sama Awe Jeba. Pegu go into motion. The go busy now shook. Now wabanum. Ginagu Kadanaskan away, a Sama away, Kuminukun with a cushion. The Gokan away in a machine gay, the Gamishin Gagu. Magashaka and Wabin Dan Gagu. Magashaka Boaja Gagu. Gishpin Gagu, the machine made a shway gizit chigay. Mewaza and Gizit chigay water in the Mewaza and Gizit chigay water in the Shnabe. Miguach Wabanum. Miguach now Guam. Miguach. Which nail? Uh, so that that prayer goes in four iterations. It's like you repeat. You go start with the west. You go to the south. Then you are the no. You start with the east. You go to the south. Then you go to the west, and then you go to the north. And the, you know that's that's that traditional circle, that way of of doing it. Like some people say, uh, well, I just use clockwise. Just to explain it to people, um, and what when did how I learned that at a very young age? Some some people use the four the four winds. Four winds. Yeah. So they use uh, see there's Belgic, Nij, Niswe, Niwin. Four. Niwin on Don and Muck. That's four winds. Niwin on Don and Muck. Winds is on Don and Muck. And some use just wabanum, jawanum, nagabiyanum, diwaydanum. And usually, I when I'm, I I use both. Hardly use uh, niwen on down and muck, but I use uh, uh, the other four directions. And and the way the way we were taught, that's the way. That's the way that we. I learned and it sticks to me, you know. But Perry learned about when he was twelve or left to really do do prayers and stuff. I remember seeing uh grandpa used to have his, his plug and the part that I took out of that prayer was because it was grandpa's remember that invocation you taught me? I took out one phrase because I'm not a pipe carrier. You know, Gawi Mushi, not yet. Um, that'll come later on in my life, um, but there's a part on there that says, uh, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, Nungum, it's today I lit my pipe. Nungum, Nungiska on a new pole gun. There we go. It just came to me. I take that part out because I'm not a, I'm not a pipe carrier yet, but that was in his original, uh, writings for when I was learning that. So you can, you could say, Nungum Nigi Da Sa Sam Hagujing. That's yeah. this morning I put, I put tobacco outside. Gujing. Yeah. I just can't believe I've, I've take, taken that part off for so long I almost forgot it. Nungum Sha Nigi Skaan Ru Pogan. Today I lit my pipe. Yeah. I was like, Skaan is when you light something up. Your pipe and do Pogan. Or Nidu Pogan, my pipe. You know, but I used to see him when we I come down and sit for an hour when I was in high school, 
early years, he would sit by that window and before he'd do his pipe ceremony, his pogan, sagaswa, he'd, he'd always have the tobacco in his left hand and he'd always point it towards the window and he'd, I used to see him put that tobacco, point that tobacco with his hand to all four directions and he'd do it like four times. He'd do it a certain amount of times and stuff like that sticks with you. And, you know, that's what I just want to tell people, like, you know, if you pray, you, you put your tobacco, well, you know, good things will come to you, whether through dreams, visions, um, could be uh, good luck, huh, even. Yeah. Yeah, good mm -hmm. energy. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I used to, so just when you're exposed to certain, certain elements of the culture like that, they, they'll stick with you. And um, I know a lot of people are kind of timid and um, shy to engage the, the Anishinaabe culture and the, the way of life. But, it's, you know, it's nothing to be afraid of. Like Grandpa said, you know, Grandpa Lester used to say. Some people have different different views about the language. Like some say they're they're evil, they're you know they're not, you know. But nope, it was just being human, that's all it was. Yeah. <laughs> I know the smoking of Kogan can uh, can tell you a lot of things, you know, and because I remember one time my cousin was dying. Well, they said she was dying. She was in St. Mary's Hospital. Then I come in, I said, Lester, I said, can you smoke your pipe for my cousin? I said, and he got all his stuff. He always do his prayers by the kitchen table on me. He had a white, white cloth, and I, I helped him get out all this stuff and put him on a table, and he lit his pipe and he was he was just lighting, he just lit it lit it up and he was just gonna start uh uh where poor gun smoked his pipe and right away he he put it away just fast. I said, What's the matter? He said, She's gone already. And uh, nobody called me to tell her, tell me that she was gone. Here, a little while later, my cousin called me and she said she just passed. So he said the spirits were telling him to put his pipe away. It was too late. You know. And you know, a lot of, I suppose you have to be Anishinaabe to believe that way, but maybe a lot of other people believe that way too, you know. But, uh, you know. Well, let's, uh, want to wave the dog? No. Yep. Rest. Yep, me go, yep. Miss Gobanese. That is, yep. On wave the dog. Let's rest. Yeah, that's uh, I, that's not what I wanted to say. What, what oh. was that? The one that you said uh, the elders used to say out on the lake, let's take a break. Where is that? How do you mean? Oh, yeah. That's the way for a janass a little while. Mm, okay. I'm going to have to write that down. And uh, use it a little bit more often here. But what we're going to uh, take a quick break here. We're going to freshen up our Makadei Mashkiki Wabu. And uh, yeah, put some more makeup on here. And we'll be right back. remember mm -hmm. and it was not too long after my grandma we were in the living room and remember that doorknob uh -huh. it, it shook or it moved like somebody was coming in but yeah 
And my grandma said, hey, who's that? We looked out the window. And Nobody? Nobody. Mm -hmm. my, that's when you said that was probably him coming around to visit, you know, people before you. Yeah, that's yeah. what the, your grandma did. She used to tell us before. Mm -hmm. Just when they passed, she said their soul goes all over visiting. Yeah. And do they ever uh, do they ever do like a community wide thing, or is that just something that they did at a at a um, at a uh, midday uh, function? Did they they do that feast or recognize all the the ancestors and stuff like that? You know, because you know how mm -hmm. yeah. we always say that they they might want or need something, or uh -huh. I mean, we offer offer yeah, up they there. Do that. But we used to, but we do that nowadays as 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 families, right? Yeah. But in a but back before mm -hmm. contact. Yeah, they used to make big pots of food. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying is missing. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. You know, because the government just kind of made us all separate now, and we yeah. don't come together anymore. A lot of the teachings were like I've noticed too are like. One, like what you said, one family will know how to do this. Yeah. One, it's all compartmentalized now, right? And it's the same thing, you know, with the language or with just living our family structures, mm -hmm. breaking us apart, and then, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's easier for them, to, for the church and all that, to come in and teach them new ways to, to think and new ways mm -hmm. to do things, you know? So that's my philosophy on it. But. Man, they said that they'd overturned that Roe versus Wade. Yeah. Holy man, there's a lot of people are outraged with that. Yeah, I know it's gonna be some, some something's gonna really, happen. Yeah, I was like, holy man, it's with their their religion, their Christianity. There's like five or six, uh, the ones that control the laws and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're pushing their their religious beliefs on the whole, on most of America. And people on Facebook are outraged now, saying that. Well, I seen one meme that said. Christian Christian rules should only apply to Christ, Christ, Christian people, and that's what that what they overturned that abortion. Well, I know we our culture we don't believe in abortion either. You're not mm -hmm. supposed to do that, but yeah, I guess a lot of people are just angry about it, angry at the government now. That's what's going on now. Governor Walls just talked about it. He said, "No, we're not state of Minnesota. We're not overturning that." As long as I'm in office, I'll we'll, we'll fight that. Oh no, it's wild. You want some coffee, girl? Yeah. I'll get you a little cup. How many sugars? Uh, three. Three. I'll get you a little cup. Ten. No. <laughs> they don't sway like, like a bear. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> did you like the list though, the outline? Yeah, that was good. That was good to make sense. Just. That was good just to make sentences out of them, out of them words. Oh yeah, I'll get you a cup of coffee, girl. And that's the only way you're gonna learn is when you hear sentences. Well, and our episodes are being will be archived and stuff too. So mm -hmm. for future generations, if they'll hear how you spoke it and George and me too. Yeah, like, like if I did did I mention Macadamish Kiki Wangu, be or. Please give me Please coffee. give me coffee. May I have to go this way? Please give me sugar. Uh, uh, three sugar, two milk. Two, two. Like that for you, girl? Use a language like that. You know, but nobody's so, so, everybody's so used to using. Well, then a lot of things too, Graham, is people are nervous. They don't want to yeah, get sure. laughed at when they speak mm -hmm. the language. I've noticed too. That's why a lot of people yeah. won't they, speak it. They, uh, that's, there's one of them uh, values. Get down, Bobby. You just laugh at yourself. All laugh right, at we yourself. are <clears throat> back with you here. And uh, got our coffee freshened back up. Yeah. And. Um, we're uh, in the hour of our Anishinaabe Moen with Auntie Karen. And I've been sharing some music here, some flute playing. Normally I don't play that much flute, but uh, I just kind of put it on in the background. I just wanted everybody to know that these songs are, are songs that were um, created or, um, yeah, 
by Joe Hoagland. So I don't know if he's got his CV out there, but I know he um, he he has done a, a whole album of these things. I think there's probably about 12 songs that he's got on his CD that we got a hold of and we were able to add them to our um, collection here. And uh, yeah, so if you ever get a chance, ask Joe about that. Yeah, his flute playing. Yeah, I think it, it, it's just something that, you know what I mean? Everybody's really modest here in, in Net Lake. I mean, they don't fancy themselves, you know, um, what do you call it? Big time artist or big time musician or anything like that. Everybody just tries to say, oh, you know, that's just something I do or, you know, they just want to keep it on the down low. And um, yeah, but I want to encourage everybody that's listening out there, you know what I mean? If, if you have a talent or something like this, yeah. I mean, that, that's some good stuff, you know what I mean? And uh, we're gonna try to get some more people up here, uh, some of our neighbors, um, you know, like um, uh, Orville, Orville Counselor from Northwest Bay. And, uh, you know, he lives over in um, Thunder Bay right now. We had him scheduled to come here and uh, share his music. He's uh, not only just a musician, but he's a, <clears throat> a dancer. And uh, I see now he's, uh, over the, the pandemic times he's been able to um, you know bring in his family and uh, not only is he talented but his brother Kyle he's a he's a flute player also uh, guitar player he's uh, played in a few bands and uh, not only that but his uh, his dad Louis and his uncle uh, have also been out there uh, as uh, hoop dancers yeah which uh, we'd like to hear more about. And so we want to invite uh, invite Orville down and I'm sure he's got all of that knowledge and he can share that with our um, community here. And like I said, I'm going to get back into the uh, language here. Anishinaabe Moen and you're listening to KBFT 89.9. And uh, what we usually do here on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we invite you to come in and join us right now. We are uh, Facebook living also, if that's a word. Living? Is living a word, Perry? Living? Yeah, uh, Facebook living. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, that's what we're doing. That's a daring question. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it's kind of the first time that everything's uh, worked out for me uh, te technically wise. Um, there's some software involved, hardware. And then everything's got to kind of like talk nice to each other and all that. So uh, if we uh, invite everybody, get on our Facebook Live, give us a comment. I'm trying to find the comment section. So anybody that's got a question out there about the language can definitely ask us. If not, um, I do have my my uh, Res Rock and Radio number available. Also, if you want to text us any of your questions about anything that we've been talking about or that we are talking about, and I'll try to keep an eye on my phone here just to uh, make sure that your question gets through. Usually we get a lot of them at towards the end of the hour. And like I said, we're going to go until uh, noon today. So everything that we can discuss about Anishinaabe Moen is kind of what we're covering. A lot, lot of cool stuff. Like I said, I learn something new every time I'm on the air with these two. And uh, it's been great having Perry aboard here with, uh, you know, his knowledge and uh, of the language. And then also uh, him having a, a, you know, family relationship with uh, his grandmother here. And of course, she's my aunt too. And uh, so uh, I'm going to turn it over to these guys and they're going to lead us into another discussion. We'll probably cover the, the material that you created, Perry. Okay. Uh, again at the top of the hour or sometime at the uh, beginning of the next hour just so our next group of listeners can tune in I know not everybody's able to like yep. you know what I mean stick with us all the way through it so um, go ahead guys do you remember Harry Bonus oh I'm George? sorry yeah I remember Harry yeah uh, he was the I worked at Head Start or his wife Betty was there working too and she was the cook and he was like a joker, like a teaser. He'd tease us ladies. And he used to always say, Gago Gupchewin Don. What's Gago? Don't. Yeah. Don't, you'll see you. 
if you were kind of touching the food or something that means don't you'll get it dirty or something <laughs> gupchi wein dan yeah gego gupchi wein dan wein dan gego gupchi wein dan yeah okay. don't touch it oh no. then darren i talked to darren and he said that he put some kid songs on the oh okay on there all right it's a four he played one on his song uh, oh on his show yeah uh and i was thinking of playing at these two okay what right. if you can do that's that. right we're going to do story time too at then, uh 11 45. yeah and then okay if you could play one now and then that's why i said even music teaches you if you hang on to every word that they're singing you will know you will get to know the what they're saying because every word they say in this song it comes out clear oh yeah yeah we're uh Hold on a second here. I gotta get all the Darren. He's having car troubles. Everybody's having car troubles right now. I know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Day. High price. <laughs> I know. It's, I think Darren's in for a big uh, bill too. But he even tries to fix things himself. You know. But every mm -hmm. once in a while, he's gotta. He doesn't have the right tool or something, mm -hmm. or he's gotta lift it up higher or something mm -hmm. like that. So. Um, I'll try to get a hold of him and then, uh, yeah, you guys can go ahead and keep talking about him, okay. finding out where these sounds are. Talk about? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I think we could talk about uh, the importance of cultural immersion school, schools or camps. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I. You should help me. Okay. But uh, years ago we started our first immersion and back then there was elders like there was Myra, Ellen Adams. You know, Char there, Joe Hoagland, Harvey Thompson, um, Rose Chosa. We had uh, Cooks, uh, Joey Chosa. Um, geez, there was a lot. Uh, very good sky. Dajan, Jean. That they were all speakers back then, and when we had our first immersion camp, uh, we had all these. All now, as it got, as it got uh, going, and it, people start passing away, and like the elders, and uh, start getting less and less language. And they can't. Daylene was in. Come there, Daylene. Uh, well, I can't remember all the kids that. Did you come to the merge? Yeah, I was. I was there. I even remember. I think was it wasn't Gilbert Smith that one too? Yeah, Gilbert come there, and they just did. Uh, they, they had him do the ceremony, I think, mm -hmm. or he helped with the. I remember. Mm -hmm. Leon used to go to those. Little Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, Don, Little Don, a one, mm -hmm. Gaiji Wayo Don, um, Little Pete, mm, Ga Gawin. I don't remember. I, he might have attended one or two, but I don't remember him really being. Yeah. He used to be an awesome powwow dancer. He doesn't do it anymore. Yeah. Who was that? Uh, my older brother Pete. Oh, okay. He used to he used to dance, and uh, I noticed a shift in him when he start going to high school he kind of mm. shifted away from it and I was okay. like hopefully I'll come back eh? yeah <laughs> I see Wendy's coming back oh yeah she, drift, she has a nice dress oh, yeah, beautiful dress yeah, yeah. yeah. It is, you know she's she's taking the culture again you mm -hmm. know, for a while she stepped out for a while but I'm glad she's back you know, you know what I was I'm always amazed about when people come back like that how much they know 
Mm -hmm. How much they're willing to share after yeah. they, mm -hmm. they uh, start getting involved. Yeah, like uh, that I said, sounds good. When, when you're little, you know, I can remember when the language was being spoken. I remember I was like only one years old and I was at, I woke up crying and I was sitting on my ma's lap. She was trying to uh, stop me from crying. She didn't know what. And then Phyllis came there and she was trying to find out what was wrong with me. But I was only like one year and I can remember that. And you know, they say, I, you know, how long do you, uh, then when I was, went into first grade, I remember that far. Like when that teacher told me not to talk that way. Don't talk that way here, you talk that way at home. But, uh, you know, some, I suppose at some parts that, like these little Head Start kids here, and I've been working with them and maybe since they were little maybe some stuff will come back to them when they're when they're older mm -hmm. Cause, you know. yeah i know i i think i told you like growing up i i remember a lot of stuff when i was just a mm -hmm. a little little one you know mm -hmm. maybe even before i could even talk i mean i can kind of remember things like even uh, like strongville mm -hmm. you know uh, like i can almost remember just being in a in a swing in a mm -hmm. baby swing mm -hmm. you know how natives put up the way way bison way way bison yep and uh i can remember remember things like that i remember the sky you know and the clouds and then listening to all the old men they're all laughing and <laughs> joking around you know mm -hmm. and uh just how that that not necessarily everything that was going on but just the feeling of of, of everything around you know like the, the yeah. temperature in the air and then mm -hmm. what's awesome for it is every once in a while those those things will come like a walk into somewhere or be somewhere and then it'll all be like how it was and then it'll just kind of fill me over with this feeling you know i wonder like what i like i was reading somewhere they say that the baby while it's in his mother's uh, stomach or whatever mm -hmm. the, that baby can hear what's going on oh yeah all, yep and that's all they did was talk the language when i was mm -hmm. my mom was carrying me yeah so you know we don't remember but you know and that's that was our first language we heard when we were in the yep in my mother's carrying us you know mm -hmm. people talking to her and her talking to her talking to other um, fluent speakers. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how the maybe someday we will get our language back some. Well, I think like our last discussion, you said what will happen when we do get our language back, you know, and then mm -hmm. maybe Take someday they'll be taking it away again. Mm -hmm. And I kind of think that's true, you know what I mean? There's different waves of of uh, time you know mm -hmm. kind of like uh, you know things that Perry was just talking about you know and in different time frames like well that thing you were talking about was about 50 years ago you know and halfway through the century everything gets turned the other way you know what I mean oh yeah yeah so I, I think times like that happen and I you know it's good that we were bringing we're trying to bring it back anyway mm -hmm. you know just like my our grandma Rose used to talk to us. She used to say, I remember her well I was about eight, nine years old and she was telling me about she said, You know why why they take people from the earth? She said is our earth is getting too full, she'd say. And so they end up taking and I was thinking about that when I got older. That's the way it is because, you know, the, like say they have big plane crashes, big anything where it takes hundreds of people, you know, mm -hmm. and all this. And that must be how maybe the world is too overcrowded. 
Yeah. So when I right. things happen, I will. Well, what was that? I heard? A, I heard something on the radio this morning that there were twenty. I believe it was twenty-six. I want to say quintillion life forms on this earth, and I suppose that includes the money do saints. Is that how you say that? All the little insects and all mm -hmm. the little money do saints. Oh. Yep, money do saints. So I think that's that was including all that. So if you think about it, all the things that are have a, a I don't know what you want to call it, a life that mm -hmm. they can move and all that stuff. I mean, that's just mind boggling. I think they said it was like uh, 26 with like 29 zeros or something like that. So <laughs> yeah, that's what the well, Lester used to always say. Everything has a spirit. Everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Rocks. More so in our culture because we, mm -hmm. we recognize, you know, the, the lakes and the, the rocks, and yeah, the rocks, the fire, yeah, the grandfathers. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's all all of that that's going on, and it's all just full of it, you know, the, the everywhere. You mm -hmm. know, how do you say that again? They're everywhere. Kinagoguchi. Oh, yeah. Kinagoguchi. Okay. Yep. Uh, hey, I found those uh, those songs. Okay. Nice. All right. So let me see. And listen closely. Just hang on to every word they say. George, you can play a song. This one's called Bimmy Batoon. Yeah. That means run. Fishing. Hmm? Fishing. Oh, yeah. Sit down. Bring me something. He can bite. Bring me something they can bite. Pull, pull, we could be doing pull, pull. There you go, that's uh, Bimmy Batoon by uh, Neoshin, Neoshin uh, Kid Songs, that's the name of the artist. And it's saying, run, run, let's go fishing, Bimmy Batoon, Bimmy Batoon. Gee wee, way, way, banabi min, then sit down, sit down, namatabin, namatabin. Be do da, ji da koma wad, bring me something they can bite, the fish they're talking about. And it just has simple little words in there. And, you know, there's more songs, like I like the house song, and uh, and uh, waka igan. That's house is uh, waka igan, and and uh, is my home. And, you know, there's all, there's, I think there's six songs on this uh, CD, but it's for uh, Neoshing. That's Malax. That's how you say Malax. Neoshing. Neoshing. Jeez, I almost Will drank your. Share? I almost drank. Took a drink your coffee. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, 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 <laughs> Let me see here. I almost forgot to have a Facebook live in there too. So if you get a chance, uh, go on to our Facebook, and you'll uh, see that we're all on camera here. You can. Uh, interact with us i believe i'm trying to learn how to do all this at the same time so um i'm not ignoring you i'm just trying to figure this out just so we're we'll be better at it in the coming shows so and this is something that we do well let me do this i think it's time we get a station id so here we go you're listening to kbft 89.9 fm broadcasting from net lake minnesota Streaming online at www.kbft.org forward slash listen 
L-I-S-T-E-N dash live. So go to that address and you'll be able to pick us up anywhere in the world. Yeah. Well, you got to hit the player button. But And then there's also some information there about how you can load our uh, program, our audio stream onto your phone. So you can like punch it into your phone as you get in the car and have it load up on your Bluetooth inside your vehicle and you can take us anywhere at any time even while you're sitting there maybe you're uh, you know at the doctor's office you know waiting to get in and uh, 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 how do you say that mashtiki uh, in nini yeah in medicine medicine man yeah the doctor mm -hmm. and uh, you're waiting how would you say waiting Bobby oh Bobby oh yeah Bobby namatabin Bobby oh Mishkiki in Nini. yeah, you're sitting down waiting for the doctor. And uh, yeah, so you can load up our phone right on your, or load up our, our programming right on your phone. And not only is it like a live stream, but you can uh, go back to past shows like this show here. It's going to be uh, archived right on our, our website. So you'll be able to go on there, look at the first hour of uh, Anishinaabe Mowin with uh, Auntie Karen and you'll be able to load the 10 o'clock hour and maybe you listen to it and you say hey wait a minute I need something you can also load it for the 11 o'clock hour which you can search and uh, find out all these awesome words that we're we're learning and I think what we're going to try to do Perry is we'll try to recap some of the material that we have in there mm -hmm. and then we'll you know that we we've heard and we'll we'll put it in written form. Yep. And we'll just put it up there, and we'll try to make it searchable. You know, like how did uh, how did she say uh, waiting for the doctor? You know. Yep. Um, and then we'll, people can we can mark it, and then they can just go ahead and find all that information right on our you know the archives. Yep. Yeah. And where I eventually want to get with it, I want to make sure I break it down, like how um, they have a system. For in language classes nowadays in college, high school, you break down like the verb, the uh, the the ni, the the mm -hmm. nin, the gin, yep. and then you have the the uh, was it the VTA, yep. VTA, the VTA, verb v transitive, yep. and yep, I want to get to, I want to start doing that. Okay. Just for I know some people are really mm -hmm. particularly they like that, you know, and that, yep. that's awesome. So I want to get to that level, and I will in the next few weeks. So. Awesome, yeah. Well, we're it's a work in progress, like yep. I said. And uh, I want to thank, uh, you know, not only our listeners, but uh, Auntie Karen for being patient with us. You know, I know there's a lot that she has as far as ideas go. And uh, it's taken at least, what has it been, two years now? Mm -hmm. when, that, when we first sat down? Yeah. Yeah. And then COVID just happened that week. And then all of a sudden we had to bust it up. And, mm -hmm. you know, luckily we were able to you know, come back and uh, start this up again. So these are the kind of things that, uh, you know, are in development. And I don't want to spend a lot of time just trying to, you know, figure out our our format or figure out our, you know what I mean? So, and, and I think this, you know what I mean? We got two hours to play with here and uh, things like this are very important. Of course, you've been pushing me to, to get this on the air and we want to continue or we will continue doing it as long as we can. And then also, just a word out to the community, if there's any other uh, subjects or topics or whatever it might be, especially our tribal programs that are out there, you know, our health services, if you got uh, a, a program where you have a, a new service or new staff, maybe you want to bring them up here and you know what I mean, we can just sit down and it doesn't take more than five, ten minutes just to run through a quick introduction and, you know, talk about what they're going to be doing, how they're going to service, what their hours are, what their availability, and uh, just some of the other benefits that, uh, you know, these new programs that are, are uh, have been brought to our, our community. So that's kind of what KBFT is, is all about, and I've always dreamed about having, you know, uh, community members kind of flowing in and out of here and uh, doing these uh, these kind of shows, you know, because Karen and her passion for Anishinaabe Mowen, she's the one that makes this happen. You know, she's the one up here pushing us and saying, hey, um, I want to do this or I'd like to do this. Could we do that and that? And so that kind of pushes us, you know, especially as creative, creative individuals, 
you know, to, you know, like this uh, format that we're using right now to stream, that's the kind of knowledge that is also helpful. So if there's anybody that's out there and says, hey, you know what, this would be really good if you guys did TikTok or if you guys did, you know, shorten, more short videos or something like that, that information is all welcome because everybody learns in a different way, right? Yep. Like I have to write down everything. So what I'd like to do is be able to search this program, uh, find the information that I want to remember or anything that's new to my tig Tiguan. Tiguan. Yeah. New to my head. Um, and then, uh, you know, practice it, write it down. And that way it becomes part of my knowledge and my vocabulary. So that's helpful to me. We don't have a way of doing that here other than just somebody taking notes or whatever, you know what I mean? But that's how I learned. And I know other people do it visually, you know, they just have to see it. And then some people just have to listen to it sometimes or both, you know. Um, so we want to try to make this uh, available in, in many learning uh, techniques or uh, vehicles and stuff like that. And all the stuff that you said with the verb. Uh, uh, like the makeup animate. of the sentence, yeah. Yeah, verb, animate, transitive, or all that, you know what I mean? Technical English type uh, system, you know what I mean? Where they kind of describe the verb and describe the action and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, good stuff. So, yeah. like I said, it's it's a work in progress. And hopefully someday we have a, a producer, somebody in this other room over here that's controlling all the... The camera angles and all the uh, the audio, and then we have outlines in front of us, and we'll have to break for a commercial or not commercial, but break for a sponsor. You know what I mean? Yeah. So those kind of things are are ahead, but I certainly do appreciate you know all the uh, the attention and the the focus that you brought to us here. So miigwech. You know, um, I get a lot of uh, feedback on. Uh, uh, when I, I post, I post um, how I write. Mm -hmm. I, the way I write it, I, or how I see, how I see the word, like boo-ju, uh, I put B-O-O, boo-ju, mm -hmm. then I put a little slant, Z-H-O-O, Nij, then I put a, like, a little thing there, Nij, N-I-I, then a little slant, J I I, Buju Ni G. And a lot of people don't understand, you know, I suppose because how I'm spelling, like uh, like uh, numbers, like uh, 20, mm -hmm. like Nij, C U C 2 in there. Nij Ta T A N A A, Nij Ta Na. There's some word like animals, like, you know, like, uh, probably makwa, ma, N-A, ma, K-E-W-A, makwa. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, like, they were getting mixed up between gego and gigo. Oh, yeah. Uh, gego is G-E-G-O. Right. And then uh, fish is... Uh, G G E G O O G G O. So, you know that's uh, there's a lot of in uh, even when I go back, I can't. Sometimes I I have to look at my writing, and that's why I I would try to get on the on the, the camera and speak out the words. You know, speak out the words that are saying. Like you gotta hear them right from a person's mouth to understand mm -hmm. what the words are like. Yeah. Like na shki di nes, na shki di nes. Then when you get good at it, you can just go right through. You know, you don't have to say them na shki di nes, na shki di nes. You know. Yeah. You can. So you use the the little slant, the little like little comma thing to. Mm -hmm. um, to indicate where the break is, right? Yeah. To, between mm -hmm. the separate, um, well, I would call them syllables. Mm -hmm. So na would be like a little break. Yeah. And then chi, and then a little break. But 
So that that even that itself is is very unique, you know, to you. So that's what I want to uh, explain to a lot of listeners and a lot of learners. There's probably uh, everybody's got. Well, there's one more too, you know, which is uh, up in Canada. They have the um, well, what's that called? Uh, syllabics, mm-hmm. you know, where they use like little triangles and little dots and things like that. And so that's one more. And I don't know anything about that, but I'm sure. You know what I mean? Somebody yeah. Somebody young could really learn. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I seen that that was going around. People were sharing that information. Was, yeah. Those... And, I, and I, it looks like an alien language to me. You yeah. Know what I mean? yeah. I thought that was really cool. <laughs> I can't believe you saw and that, maybe too. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what we are. You know, maybe we're the aliens here on Earth, you know? <laughs> when, when, we, when we were going to uh, uh, school to get our license, uh, that's that's what they were talking about. Syllab syllab syllabics. 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 Mm-hmm. That's what I, I told Claire. I, I nudged her. I said, Wegunashi is syllabics. I said <laughs> <laughs> Wegunashi is what is that? Uh-huh. Yeah. Wegunashi. Yeah. So you would say we W A A G U G U Nash. N A S H E E Wegunash E E or I H E E. Yeah, and then uh, in double vowel that would be W E would be the way, mm-hmm. and then like you Wego. do it phonetically is W A Y. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so those are some of the uh, the differences, and like I said, Karen just uh, kind of shared about how she uses the the uh, syllable breaks. So she tries to break it down into uh, single uh, pronounce, pronunciation. And so she gets very descriptive in it and she'll put the, the shay, S-H-A-Y, that'll be there and then it'll have like a little, a little height, uh, like a comma looking thing, just to indicate where the break is. You know, like you say, Zagai gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that, I mean, we say Zagai gun or, What's the other way to say it? Zaga Igani? Yeah. Yeah. So we would, you know, and those are what differences in, uh, is that dialect? Yeah, probably in dialect and then okay. just the mother. Uh, yeah, like uh, uh, what, Namatbin and uh, how do they say it down south again? Uh, Namatbi? No, no, no. no. Uh, Raven used to say that. No, they said they say that in Red Lake. Yeah, they say it differently, mm-hmm. and it, that one would be probably dialect too. That's you know, true, yeah. Uh, I can't even, it's so simple too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, uh, oh, I gotta look it up. I have to look that up. But yeah, I'm just trying to explain a little bit about the the styles of of. Uh, um, learning methods I guess yeah and that's what it would be so in in learning I can kind of understand a little bit about how a learner would kind of get frustrated by that mm-hmm. but I think that might be kind of the built-in thing about um, remember I said that all the learning styles yep. we got to mix those in there too so I'm thinking that um, when people are learning something they're either focused on the the uh, book material, the written material, or they're really audio um, centric where they have to hear it, you know, <clears throat> or in other words, I think um, all of our learning styles are different to, to each individual, so it is it is challenging, you know, but like you said, just keep at it, keep, mm-hmm. keep learning, you know, and uh, I think just for the sake of uh, all of us, I think people have to be respectful, you know, in that way, even though we're kind of programmed to, you know what I mean, have a have a little chuckle. Yeah. I mean, we can have a little little laugh at each other when we mispronounce something, because we might be saying something else, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I seen this meme one time where this guy was trying to learn a language and he's, uh, you know, he tried to say something and he thought he was just saying like, oh yeah, I was, I'm gonna, change your diaper or something like that and <laughs> the, the joke was he summoned the, summoned the demon you know <laughs> I mean obviously that's not part of our culture but 
You know what I mean? I mean, it's it's kind of humorous in a way. You know what I mean? But like, um, uh, like, Namat uh, Bin, you know how I say it on when I write it out. Na, N A, in the the na, ma, M A, the ma, da, D A, bin, B I N. That's how I say Namat the bin, mm -hmm. and then like. Sit down. That sit down. No matter been we sit in. Sit down and eat. W I I we. Or I could say W E E we sit S I N I N. You know we sit in. No matter been we sit in. And uh, but on uh, on uh, there's another little word with just na that means like. If your little kid is throwing a little fit crying, you would say, nah, nah. That means that they're telling your little kid to listen. Oh, I've nah. got it here, watch. Uh, nubba dubby. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> nubba that, dubby, yeah. Because, yeah. uh, uh, what's her name? Raven come to oh my uh, Indian class when I had it at the, at the RTC, and that's what she was saying, nubba dubby. Yep. And I said, well, that's how you must say it, and where you, you learned, I was, you know, she said, Red Lake, she said, I, you know, I said, well, up here at Boys Fort, I said, we say, Namatabin, Namatabin. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy, because it, it's almost spelled the same, you know, mm -hmm. Namat, Nabadabi versus Namatabin. And I think what changes that is probably the N at the end. Mm -hmm. So, Namatabin, that's how the... I don't know if that's the word up there, but yeah, they yeah. have different ways mm -hmm. at the reservations, you know. Yep. Well, another uh, one is uh, Little Don in Michigan. Oh yeah. That oh, uh, uh, he, his teacher taught him how to say uh, what was that word? Frog. Frog. Yeah. We say Omakaki oh, mm -hmm. here. Omakaki. Oh, K I I at the end. Omakaki, and he come down, he come for the summer, come stayed with us, and he was saying, Omakaki. Omakaki. Oh. Yeah, that's the way they said it in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And then he told uh, his teacher that. Mm -hmm. We said it's Omakaki. Mm -hmm. And uh, the teacher told him, well, that's how we say it here on this reservation. Yeah, yeah. So... But he still kept our omakaki. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I would probably say, well, like what about uh, what about even um, like Menominee? You know, they 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 say the words too. Like you could understand somebody that that is a Menominee person, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the same way. Remember James Pontiac? He was a cop here. Oh, okay. And his mother and dad come to visit up here, and uh -huh. they had the same words we had up here. Mm -hmm. They were Cree. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, with the Cree language, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because they were all, uh, what do they call it, Algonquin, or, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the the natives that were up along the eastern seaboard, like over there by Boston uh, yep. and those places, you know, and... Uh, I, I know even like that creation story was one of the things that I always or it always stuck in my mind about mm -hmm. uh, you know like when man was created mm -hmm. and then uh, they talked about like all the spirits just were in amazement of, of what they had what the creator had you know created mm -hmm. and uh, but there was one spirit that was told that he couldn't um, he couldn't look at him because his, his vision was yeah. so powerful mm -hmm. that he would destroy him if he, you know, had his eyes open and looked at him. Yeah, so he was always cautioned about that. And I always wondered what, what I, that was. I rem that's, that's crazy that you bring that up because I remember that story. Gene told that story oh, okay, when yeah. we were young. Yeah. I, I forgot to ask you about that, Shad. You know, when I learned about eyes, about uh, uh, spirits. Oh, my goodness. The the spirits that passed on. I mean, mm -hmm. the people that passed on now are spirits. Yeah. And they said, 
the spirits will never look you in the eyes. And usually when I have dreams of, uh, I've had a lot of dreams of Lester. Mm -hmm. And he never once looked at me. Mm. He either, I could hear him, he was there, I knew he was there. He was talking, I could hear him talking. But I, he'd never show his face or his eyes. Mm. And that's the same thing, uh, you know, they, I don't know, they said it has something to do with the eyes. The yeah. spirit. I'm sure there's more teachings that, that go along with that, you know. Oh, then I was going to say, the word for Cree is Mushkigo. Mushkigo. Yeah. Long time ago, there was an old man up here. His name was Fred Jordan. Mm -hmm. He lived on a hill where Brian Whiteman lives now. He had a little green shack. And he was he was a Cree Indian. He married a, a boy sport woman. And... Uh, they, that's what they called him. They called him Mushkigo. Mm, Mushkigo. That, that means a, a Cree. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds like to me, it sounds like uh, like a powerful fish. That's yeah, what it sounds that, like to me. Mm -hmm, Mushkigo. Oh, yep. Yeah. yeah. You hear that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Gigo on the end. Mm -hmm. But there, there's so, so many different stories. You know, some, some have different different ways of uh, telling stories, you know. Yeah. Some heard it from their their grandparents and... You know. I think there, that one I was just talking about, about that being that was, uh, his vision was too powerful to mm -hmm. look at uh, how beautiful uh, man was. Mm -hmm. um, they did like scientific uh, studies of sharks. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, that's what they, they were saying about the shark, is that it, it has the, a unique ability, even from underwater, wow. to, to observe the stars. That's how powerful mm -hmm. his, his vision is, is that he can see the stars from, from underwater, that's you know, and uh, see them as they are. So that was one of the beings, I, you know, and for that to be told, you know, thousands of years, and uh, for us to, for science to kind of, kind of figure that out, I think that's that's just, you know what I mean. I mean, it's not coincidence. <laughs> you know what I mean. Our people knew this stuff a long time ago. Yeah, what you're talking about is, I heard something about that years from. This is from, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Mizunobi Tung. Mm -hmm. He used to tell us that. His mother went into a G scon. Mm -hmm. You know how it just it's covered good, the yep. G scon. Mm -hmm. And she told him that while she was inside that shaken tent, she looked up and she saw all blue sky and stars. Mm -hmm. Yet it was covered. Mm. And that how powerful that the shaken tent is. Yep. You know? yep. She said she clear blue and it was at night. Mm -hmm. They have to do that at night. It can't be during the day no. to uh, g scan. Mm -hmm. I still remember that first one. Uh, I didn't get to attend it because I'm not I'm not uh, Madei and I'm not uh, you, of that. You can attend them even if you're not Madei. You but, just can't go in there. Or go too close to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I remember you told me, you said, look, I was a little boy. You said, it was me, little Don and Parker. You said, just Stay by the the side of the house. He said, "Don't go too close. You can you can observe it, the ceremony, but don't don't disturb it. Don't disturb the um, the process for it." And I was just amazed when I you know we were, and then there were some people, some of our cousins. Remember when they were told, warned not to go, not to go attend that. That that's bad medicine. That that's mm -hmm. that's not good. What they're doing down there. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I was just like. You know, if 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 we were to say disrespectful things like that to their their ways or their belief, we would get just insulted for doing that. But then, but then we yeah, we'd have to pay something. Yeah, and mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's why I said that it's there has to come be a there has to be a catharsis for the way traditional people and non-traditional people coexist because mm -hmm. you know it can't just be oh well. Well, you respect our way, but we won't respect your way. You know, so I think that's just in their their modern interpretation 
you know what I mean? I think their original uh, uh, beliefs, you know, are are uh, good. You know, I mean, not not directed towards oppression and all that stuff that we've lived through. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that was brought on by all the greed. You know what I mean? For whatever it is that, well, we had we had great systems here. We had a great uh, let's call it civilization uh, as it is. I mean, it was highly uh, integrated into our environment. It's kind of like we just we were part of it. We didn't try to be the masters of it. We didn't try to be you know what I mean to exploit every little possible thing for our own personal gain gain or, yeah you know I mean when when they first came they they logged out all the the uh, the trees you know because they didn't have trees over there uh, trees that were of, of the quality here and so when they start cutting they cut and they shipped everything over back over to England and that's kind of what built their uh, their uh, or maintained their empire you know back in first contact days so you know as far as the the original belief though when these men came they were our, our elders respected them you know when they sat down and talked and they talked about a creator it was they understood it was the same creator you know but yep. the whole thing was what they did with that you know what I mean when they came here they used that as their justification you know and even the main church with the doctrine of discovery you know that came from the Roman Catholic per, uh, Church and uh, the Pope and that whole system you know basically said you know whatever you guys uh, find over there is uh, you can say you discovered it and therefore you own it you know what I mean yep. just because they were the chosen people and even though we had all that knowledge and, and shared it with them, you know, I think that's why a lot of our our people or some people today have heard that, oh, yeah, you don't want to share that. You don't want to share that story. Don't share that that knowledge, you know, because somebody out there is going to take it and they're going to use it. Yeah. And I've seen that happen. I mean, just things like uh, Stephen King, you know, where I was telling you guys about that movie, The, the Green Mile, you know, where that I can't remember his name, the, the big um Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah, Michael Clark Duncan and his uh, his character doctored that that prison uh, owner's wife. She was sick with cancer, and he went over there and he sucked that right out of that lady. All that stuff he was there, and it went through his mouth, right, yep. and into his body. And then he had to uh, take care of it and regurgitate it. You know what I mean? Later on, but that was his healing power. You know, and actually how he brought that little mouse back to life. In that movie, he did the same thing with it. He took that back, whatever it was that was, you know, eating away at that woman and, and that caused the, that life to be extinguished. He was the one who restored that and healed them. But I think what where that came from was from our stories, from our how we lived our lives. Not the way away. That's mm -hmm. called the healing. Not oh. the way away. Not the way away. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah, that's. Uh, it's the same same thing they used to use. They used to use deer bones, you mm -hmm. know, for uh, not the way uh, they did that to Lester. They, oh, yeah. they, and they, it was white wall. They had a white bowl with water, clear, clear water. Mm -hmm. And they did, he did like suck that out on his left lung. Mm -hmm. And when he washed out that deer bone, he then kept on working on him. And when he got done, there was a lot of little black soot like floating around in that oh, yeah. corn. And that's when he got up. But then they go in, they go into uh, outside into the woods, or they go into the woods and they get sick. Mm -hmm. They let go all that stuff they yep. were doing. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, but this guy didn't get he had, He got so sick right away that he went throwing up into the bathroom. But you know that's they they uh, healed him, and you know he lived for like seven, eight years after. Mm -hmm. But non the way he went. Non the way he went. Mm -hmm. He was healed. Okay. So yeah. Non -non so so when when all this stuff comes up and they say you know, Gawin, you know don't don't uh, 
would share that. They're, they're right, you know, especially back from the 1800s. I mean, I know they, they took what we had and they burned it. And mm -hmm. here they are, they shipped it back over to Europe and it's still there. They always said, well, there's no written record. Well, they took it all. They took all them scrolls. They probably, there was Birchberg scrolls. They probably buried them. Our people probably buried them somewhere for safekeeping, you know, and they could be rediscovered someday, who knows? But yeah. a lot of people try to say that we, we weren't civilized, we didn't have a, a system of, of uh, governing, we didn't have a system of, uh, of medicine, we didn't have a system of, you know what I mean? Yeah. Our people had all of that, and we had all that. We had our policemen, you know, our clans. Our clan system is the one that basically, you know, uh, kind of directed us, you know, about our role, you know, and I don't think anybody ever, like, questioned, um, what it is that that they're supposed to do here in life because you know we had that all built in mm -hmm. so when you went out and sought your what what is it what would that be called where you do your like your vision uh, oh, uh your quest quest yeah, vision quest mm -hmm. so those kind of things you know where you would get those answers from mm -hmm. your your environment here and the spirits that surround here you know and that's what why we maintain that relationship with our with our lake spirit here and our, mm -hmm. you know, our rice uh, mm -hmm. that gives us, you know what I mean, our, our goodness, <laughs> you know, manom, uh, manomen, you know, of course, that's the good berry and that's, that's, that, that, that is all integrated into our, we just were, you know what I mean? I mean, the, the spiritual aspect of that food and how it fed us and how it provides for us, not only just physically, but spiritually. You know, so. And that's that's what I was telling somebody. I had a dream about the saw the even the lake in Gibo Wajike. That means you dream be Gibo Wajike. I was uh, I was in a boat with a spirit. When you dream of somebody you don't know, you have never seen before. That's a spirit. When we were out on the lake, I was where sit in the back, and he was in the front. He was <coughs> he was paddling. And it seemed like there was nothing out there, but I looked down and in the front where I was knocking the rice, supposed to be knocking, there was a a pan, a bacon. My I had two. I have two nine-inch bacon pans. I have at my house, and they were sitting in the middle of the room. And I I opened that, I pulled the top one off. And there was just like maybe four four servings of wild rice in the bottom of that pan mm -hmm. so i covered it back up again and they said well we gave my job i said let's go and we we paddled paddled back to shore and uh the geeks could see i woke up and uh i was thinking about my dream i was sitting there Usually when I have a spiritual dream, I get up and sit on my couch in my, my bedroom. And I was thinking, maybe we're going to have a little bit of rice to eat. But maybe we're not going to have any, you know. Because that's how they say we communicate with the spirits through dreams. Especially when you put out tobacco, the spirits will recognize that you're, you're trying to help and do things you know mm -hmm. the, the Indian way the cultural way mm -hmm. and they'll come to you they'll come to you in a dream what that's what I was dreaming about the Sagi uh, Igan mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and so that's what I was thinking I bet well maybe we'll have a little bit to eat I don't know mm -hmm. maybe Magasha mm -hmm. That means maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, uh, well, you know, just for our listeners, we you're listening to KVFT, and uh, I'm sitting here, we have uh, a program here called uh, Anishinaabe Moen with uh, Karen, Auntie Karen, and, uh, you know, we kind of go off and uh, share some of our our knowledge as far as, um, you know, like my, my background is, uh, I got a, Indian studies degree eventually 
<laughs> long story uh, from uh, the University of Minnesota Duluth at UMD. So uh, me and one of my professors, old John Redhorse, we always tease each other, uh, or he teases me more, you know, about, uh, what's that, almost 24 years from when you started, you got your degree, you know, I think I started when I was like 18, 19, and then uh, I don't think I graduated until I was almost like 40, 38 or something like that, I finally got my degree. But yeah, it's in Indian studies, and I was really thankful for that, you know, and most people take it as a, uh, as a secondary uh, degree or a minor, you know, but uh, all the work that I put into it, I was really uh, happy that I was able to go back there and, you know, complete my studies and graduate from there. But uh, that's my background, you know, so I have a lot of book knowledge in that, and my Anishinaabe Mowin, too, uh, um, it is limited, you know, just because of the, the classes that I took there. Nothing against my instructors or anything like that, but um, it was just something that, that wasn't consistent all the way through my childhood. Like when I came here, uh, first came here in like 1976 when we moved back, um, our family moved back to the village. Um, we, uh, I think we had, uh, um, what's his name? Gilbert Caribou. That Was it Gilbert? Walter. No, I Gilbert, don't... his son. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. His uh, his son uh, was an instructor here, uh, Anishinaabe Moen instructor, and I remember taking classes from him. And then uh, Dajan came in and took over. Maybe it was Dajan first, and then uh, uh, Gilbert. No, not Gilbert. What, what was the other one's name? Walter. 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 Okay, maybe yeah. No, it was Gilbert, uh, Mousy's dad, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was him that came up. And uh, let's see, then uh, then Dajan taught for quite a while, I remember that. Uh, I think that was all the way up until about the sixth grade, and then after that, Jean took over, and this is, we were going into high school. But uh, all of that knowledge that I, that I attained was just kind of like repeating itself over and over. So we'd always go over the animals, we'd always go over you know, uh, neem, neem, and neem, you know, over and over and over. And uh, so we didn't really expand the, the vocabulary. I mean, on KBFT here, we probably have at least 1,200 words and maybe two, 300 phrases that we have recorded. And uh, Karen provided a lot of that. Jean, I don't know if Jean did, I don't think so. But uh, Ms. Anopi Tung, he came up and, and helped. And oh, we got Anton Troyer to come and do some of that too. So you know it, it's been growing and growing and so that's what kind of the thing that we want to help people um, find ways to learn the the language and I, I'm so thankful that you're able to come up here and um, you know guide us through this and I just want to let the people know that you know we're, we're doing our, our best and <clears throat> you know bringing you these things but we're also bringing you a lot of the culture behind it so we hope you appreciate that. Make a comment on our Facebook Live or whatever it is. Uh, communicate with us. Let us know that you're listening and that you heard these stories. And, uh, you know, you can pass them on also. Uh, and uh, for the kids out there, the Boys and Girls Club, not only here in uh, Net Lake, but also over in Vermilion with Orion, he's going to be gathering the kids around here in about five minutes, four minutes. And uh, Auntie Karen's going to share a little story with you. So stand by for that. And um, I'm just gonna go into here and play uh, another one of the kids songs, okay? How about uh, Buju Animush? Yeah. Okay. This is uh, Neashi kid songs. And Karen's gonna let you know what they're saying in the song. Hello, said the dog. I'll see you, said the cat. Hello, said the cat. I'll see you, said the bird. Hello, hello. I'll see you. Hello, I'll see you. Hello, 
Hello, said the bird. I'll see you, said the fly, Uji. Hello, said the spider. I'll see you. I'll see you again. Nina Wong, again. Oh, oh. <clears throat> oh, uh, like I said, that was uh, <clears throat> Nayashing uh, kit songs. And uh, you said Nayashing was Malax? Yeah. Yep, Malax. So that was from uh, Malax, and that was uh, kit songs. And uh, let me see. We're, we're working on the same kind of a project. Uh, you and uh, Keith, uh, we're going to be putting together uh, a few short songs and then also another language collection. So all of our listeners be prepared for that. That's going to be a KBFT production. And uh, we're, of course, excited to, to get that started. We kind of did the preliminary uh, research on how we're going to do it. So uh, stand by for that. And also, if there's any anybody else out there that wants to do uh, some kind of historical type recording, maybe you got some stories from long ago, We'd certainly love to reach out and Perry uh, needs uh, sources for some of this these uh, projects that we're doing through um, legacy yep. come in there's Oops, hold on go ahead. There, yep there's uh, I'm glad you brought that up there's two like leg legacy projects that I'm doing for this next year that contain um, historical and then there's another one that called go into motion Gago I'll tell you something podcast so if you want your story told as to why um, what are the how did your cultural roots help you in your career aspirations so you know and it, it we have a lot of band, uh, band members here at Boys Fort that who are successful like degrees uh, not even just degrees training advanced degrees yep advanced degrees and so that's what this podcast this legacy project will do I want to I want to gather insight and study on how what made these our band members just you know reach for success like that you know and you know it's a story that has to be told and there's you know i think it could gather garner a lot of interest so oh uh, i'm talking too long uh, go, uh, go. yeah we're going to go into our uh, if you got the kids gathered around there at the boys and girls club we'd appreciate that and uh we're gonna clear the airwaves here and let uh, auntie karen uh, take it over and she's going to share a story with us here. Aho. Uju binuji ag nukumis indijini kaas sabikunez agi iga nindun jiba adik nidu dam ni gwech kipis indawayeg I said thank you for listening. We're going to do two little teachings before we march top. I mean start. Nimaj Tamin, we're starting. Nimaj Tamin. If you can remember, some of these words are going to stick to you, but a lot aren't. But like, the, like I said, the numbers are very important to you. So are the animals and the colors. Okay, we're going to start with the uh, with uh, animals first. The Gwabidan. Makwa, Jeba. I seen a bear this morning. Nidi Wabindan Makwa. It was behind my house. Niwakai Igan, my house. I Nidi Zekwe Jeba. I cooked. I cooked Gitnab Se Gukush. I cooked bacon. And he must have be Jaman done away. We seen it when he smelt my food. And they say the bears can break through your door. And I said I was scared of Nagis Zagis. I was scared. But uh, I have like a deck in the back to my where my kitchen is. But he didn't. He come close to that, to my squan dam, to my door. And I could, I could uh, see him like his nose, kind of like he was kind of like sniffing. And 
I found it on a window on the Wasatch Run. But he wouldn't, he must have like, really liked the smell of my, my, um, Deconopsegubush. He liked the smell of my bacon. If you can say it, Deconopsegubush, you say it, okay? Deconopsegubush. And anyway, I was getting ready to call somebody to say there's a bear on my porch. I'm afraid he's going to break my door down and come and you want my Deconop Segu Kush. So I just when I found it on my window just kind of hard like three times and uh, he looked Deconobin he looked he looked right at me so then I haul I I beba again I hollered through the window I said Ma John Uji Ima, I said, go, go away. Ma John, Uji Ima. And he, he looked at me and he backed up and he, he looked like he was ready to crawl on my porch. And you know what they used to tell me when I was a little girl? Bears can understand Indian when you're, when you talk Indian to them. They'll, they'll, uh, they'll know what you're saying. And when I, when he walked away back into the woods, and I said, I'm not gonna cook Deconopse Gukush anymore. Uh, Cause they can smell miles and miles away and Makwa, Makwa is a bear. And anyway, they, they used to, they'd be riding on the, uh, on the road in the car and we'd see a we'd see a Makwa standing there and I'd roll my wind I rolled my window down and I'd say Boujou Makwa Boujou Makwa Hello bear I'd say Gibakade na Are you hungry? Gibakade na and he'd look one time this one stood up, it was a small Agashi Makwa, a small bear. It's like he understood what I was saying. I said, are you hungry? And then I, I, but we went a little ways further and I got out and I put my Sama down. Okay, that's what I do when I see because that's my husband's brother. That's his clan, Makwa. That ain't my clan, mine is terrible. But I put tobacco down to the Makwa. But uh, that don't mean you can go up to one and just start talking to it or you gotta beware of a Makwa. They might be mean or they might have babies and they'll attack you if you, if you go too close to them. Anyway, you gotta remember Makwa. Wabindan Makwa Jaba. I seen a bear this morning. The end on my house, my home. And well that's a little story I have. I have another story that I was gonna tell you what we're gonna do a couple little teachings. I want everybody to say to, to count with me, even the big people there. Basic, Nish, Niswe, Niwin, Nanan, Ningudaswe, Nishwaswe, Nishwaswe, Jangaswe, Midaswe, Midaswe, a Shibajik, Midaswe, a Shinish, Midaswe, a Shiniswe. Midaswe a Shiniwin, Midaswe a Shinanan, Midaswe a Shiningudaswe, Midaswe a Shinishwaswe, Midaswe a Shinishwaswe, Midaswe a Shijanaswe. Then you go to two, Nish, twenty, 
So you see Nij in there. Nij Tana. Nij Tana. Then you still add all over Nij Tana Ashibeji. Nij Tana Ashinij. Well, you gotta count. And after you learn your counting, you're gonna know how to say it. Nigi Wabama Nij Makwa. I seen two bears. Nigi Wabana Nigi Wabama. Bejik Makwa, I seen one bear. Nigi Wabana, Nigi Wabandan, Nanan Makwa, I seen five bears. And it's it's really important to to uh, learn your language. And uh, another thing I was gonna talk to the kids about is your uh, your. Uh, Introduction. That's the main thing you should know because, you know, Buju, Avery and Vishnikant, you know, Buju, uh, whoever's there, I don't know who's all there today. Momo and Vishnikant, Sabikanez Agiyigan and Dunjaba. I think Ms. Novi taught you too how to, in um, uh, Nukumis. But uh, there's a lot of stuff that you should learn when you're little. And this is this is how. This remember how we did the drum in my class. I let everybody use the drum, and we we did a counting thing, and we did. Uh, Dewe Igan is a drum. Dewe Igan. And the drumstick is Dewe Iginak. Remember we did. Bejik. Nij. This way. Niwin. Nanan. Four. And then we did the four directions. Wabanum. Wabanum. <clears throat> And everything, everything is like a four to the Anishinaabe. There's the four races, you know, there's the four plants of life. Everything comes in a four, you know, to the Anishinaabe. There's, what else can you name that's four? Uh, there's four seasons. The Animals. Um, no. Directions. Four directions, you know. Four walks of life. Yeah. El uh, child, elder, or adult child, teenager, adult, elder. Mm -hmm. um, there's, <clears throat> well, it was a. I don't know if they're still doing this teaching now, but yeah, there's four, four predominant races, right? Yeah. There's four. Plants. Yeah, four, four plants. So four seasons. Four seasons. It's summer, fall, winter, spring. It's a lot. There's a lot. We only just named a few. There's a lot more. <clears throat> and then we used to do like we used to pound on our drum. I, I can remember we used to sing on our drum. Basic, basic, basic. Knees, knees, knees. This way, this way, this way. Knee win, knee win, knee win. There was another song, another word to it. I, I'll think of it, then maybe next week we'll, I'll sing that song to you. But uh, right now I can't remember it. I didn't bring it. Mm -hmm. But what I was going to do is tell a story in Anishinaabe if you can, if you can uh, understand the numbers and the animals. This well, is, it'll be like homework, so go yeah. right ahead. This is going to be like, it's the, how many heard the three little pigs? And there's a number in there, and then there's an animal. Basic needs this way. Three little pigs. That's how you say three little pigs. Basic needs this way. Three little pigs. Ninawa. 
Achi Maji Maingan, the big bad wolf. Chi Maji Maingan, three little pigs and the big bad wolf. That's what it comes out to in Anishinaabe. Vejigdijik, one day. Gimama, Omama, Gukush, mother pig. Omama, Gukush, Gikido, told her. She said, Majan, Kuji Ima, go away. She was chasing them out so they could live on their own and have their own house. So they all left their, their mama pig, mama gukush. And they went and they, they the first one of the, of the, uh, he kiddo, away nini. He said to that man, kiddo me go away. Away mush, 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 squid, this spot. Please give me some hay. The ga me go. So a nini ogi meenig who mis mis misko uh misko me and he gave him that hay. So he went and uh ogishitu and wakai igun. He made a house. Ogishitu and wakai igun. Ninawa away uh gukush knees pig number two. Gukush knees Ogi, Ogi, uh, okay. No, go ahead. You can, you can, you can finish this. Okay. Ogi meenik away, uh, 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 mitigung, sticks, mitigung from a tree. So he went and he, he should do an wakai gun. He built himself a house, a house of sticks, wakai gun. Then uh Miswe Gukushas he he be me nigu away nini that man gave him bricks. There's a word for bricks, but I can anyway the Uchi Maji Uchi Maji Maingan big bad wolf Ogi Nigi Nibaka de Kido. I'm hungry. Ogi ogi me jin awe kuku shes He wanted to eat them little pigs. But I'm gonna make the story shorter. And oma ogi ogi bin de ge awe ka ka abiyok awe kuku shesag where they live. Nigo e nigi. Nigi da sa we nibi. He shot a nibi hot water. Owe chi chi ma ji. Ma ingan chi ma ji ma ingan. Ogi chi se dun owe owe a kick. Ogi gi jog sa. He jog his son. He fell in and what burnt. And he go away. Neil. <laughs> I can say this better, but I don't know. I'm kind of, I was kind of stuck because I didn't know how to say brick. No. Or, but mm -hmm. I, I have it written at my house. Because right. I, I said that to the kids. Me ill, me ill, me question, be busy, dolly egg. Me question, busy, dolly egg. So that's going to conclude our show. We thank you for uh, listening and uh, we'll uh, gather our resources again and we'll come back on Thursday. So look for us on uh, 10 a.m. on your Thursday morning. Neo? Neo gives you good? No, okay. Neo. Oh, Neo. Okay. All right, so yeah, on uh, Thursday we'll be back at uh, 10 o'clock and then we'll, we'll uh, get you going with uh, Auntie Karen and Perry and myself. So thank you for tuning in.
tuning in. Now back to our regular programming, and I do believe it uh, will join Native America Calling, uh, or uh, National Native News, I'm sorry, with Antonia Gonzalez. I like those because they were talking about language revitalization. They talked about other things with treaties on that native, national native news. Yeah, current events. Info.